I've never been a big fan of unboxing videos and that's also of course the reason why I never make some. But this time I will make an exception. I brought a brand new machine. It's just a pale copy of a Dremel. Not even half the price of a real one. So uh, we'll see. I think it will be very handy here for deburring after milling machine operations. And because we're doing exceptions, let's do another one. This one served me very well for many years, but it starts to losing its hair. So, brand new one, nice and small to go in the T slots. This will be good. Huh. Uh, unboxing videos, I really don't see the point. Right, something else. Making thread cutting tools is easy. Now, easy for the outer thread, it's easy. But if you have to cut a thread in a ball, you need a more special thing like this one, for example. And this making this kind of cutting tools is a little bit of a challenge. Now, this one works, but uh, you know, it should be better if I have, for example, inserts. And that's where Dominique from the Netherlands came in, because he did send me two boxes with thread cutting inserts. This one, 55 degrees inserts for Whitworth threading, which normally I never do, so I don't think I will use them. But uh, okay, you never know, can be useful one day. And also cutting tools for metric and uh, imperial threads at 60 degrees. Now, if we take the 60 degrees box and of course open it, otherwise we cannot take them out. This one for external threads and this one for internal threads because the point is on the other side I don't know if the camera will pick this up so this black one external this one internal which means that now that I have these cute little things I don't have to shit around anymore with uh, my homemade thing that uh, is uh, hand ground and uh, not really easy to reground again when it's dull. So I'm saved, but as always, there is a problem. I don't have a tool holder for these cute little inserts. So I suppose today's project is very clear, making a boring bar that looks a little bit like this one but of course to hold my thread cutting inserts and to do so I will use a piece of the shaper First of course I will cut off these threads and I will make the tool more or less the same length than this one. Give it a little bit more because after I have to cut out this uh, center point probably. Or maybe I leave it in. We'll see. Something like this.
this thing cuts but it leaves a horrible finish so maybe my insert is a little bit damaged Nope, not good finish. I gave the thing a little touch of uh, sandpaper to clean it up and it feels very very soft and I think to make boring bars and all this it's maybe not a good idea. So I'm gonna stop using this uh, lead screw steel instead I will use this uh, rusty steel don't know what it is but I gave it a test cut on the lathe and a touch of file and this is a bit harder and it also leaves a nice finish the, it's just that this outer diameter it's exactly the diameter that I wanted so I'm not gonna lathe it anymore I'm just gonna cut off this uh, test cut piece and over to the milling machine First I'm gonna create a flat spot where the little insert will sit in and this bar is 15, cut out about half, 7.5 and the thickness of my little insert here, 4, let's take that in half, 2, so I will cut more or less 5.5 mm deep and this will be more or less the top of the insert and then of course I will cut a pocket will, that will be 2 mm deeper than the center of the bar uh, if I swing the vice 90 degrees I can use power feed it will be easier my power feed idea is not gonna work because the head of the milling machine is completely that way and I need a little bit more of course I could take off the vise and move it uh, one groove more and then it will work not really a problem but then after I have to put it again to do the other features so uh, turn again 90 degrees this way and hand feed I installed the vise at 30 degrees and I'm ready to start cutting the little pocket to receive of course this insert here. I also installed a what is it a 3 mm 4 flute little end mill. Let's see if it works. That could work. I'm 
I think this is a very nice occasion to test my brand new machine to deburr a little bit these uh, weird angles here. Let's give it a go. That's a good start. It clearly is a high quality tool. It looks like, like this thing is bent a little bit. Well, let's try it anyway. Absolutely not used of this kind of little tools, but I suppose you've noticed. But I think uh, if I get used to it, it could work. Right, last thing to do is to make a little bolt to hold the insert in place. Oh no, and then of course also make two flats to prevent the thing from rolling. I installed my future tool here directly on the table, so I'm sure it is aligned. That will work. And of course I squared it up with the brand new surface I created here. And as you can see, my cutter is really close to the table. This is a 0.5 mm thickness and it barely fits. So it's a little bit stressful, but Let's create a flat. I would like to try something. As you can see, I use the oil to cut. And after cutting, it takes a long time to, for the oil to drain in all of the system because of course of the high viscosity and to lower it what I would like to try is to put some white spirit in it now I could put some diesel but diesel stinks I can also use some paint thinner but uh, fire paint thinner I'm not sure so I think white spirit could be a very good choice and instead of just pouring it in and let it uh, run for nothing to mix I will mix it while it's cutting I have a brand new boring bar thread cutting thing, um, okay, but does it work? Let's find out. I have here a piece of threaded rod that I don't need. And I also, for this rod, I have a nut that I don't need. So to make sure my new threading tool works, let's make a nut that I don't need for this uh, rod and nut that I don't need.
if everything goes well, I'm always very happy to show it to you, to share it to you on this channel. But uh, when it doesn't go very well, I also share it on this channel. Let me show you on my brand new tool here. I'm cutting and it works just fine. At one given moment I see appearing these lines on my tool. Which means that the top side of the shank here is touching the threads. So uh, I suppose I have to reduce a little bit the diameter to be able to cut these threads completely. I think that could work. Tool back in place and I chased this uh, thread a little bit and uh, it looks more or less promising. Let's see if now it works. Because I had to chase the thread again, because of course I took the tool out and you cannot put it exactly in the same position, I lost a little bit track of my uh, thread cutting thing here. And the result is that the stud is a little bit too loose. Of course in this case it's not important, it's a perfectly useless part. But uh, the most important thing to know is that it works. And so Dominic in the Netherlands, thanks again very much for your inserts. I'm sure they will be very useful here.